Okay, so my name is Raheem Jung. Uh, I was born here in London, in fact only a few hundred meters from here. I've always lived in London all my life. My father came here from India in the 1940s, but his family were originally from Hejaz uh, area of, of Arabia. But my mother's family are Irish. So my mother and father, they met here in London. My mother was Irish Catholic. So we were brought up in a, a very liberal family, not really following one faith or the other faith. Um, in fact, following no faith. <laughs> Assalamu alaykum, Assalamu alaykum, Sheikh. Alhamdulillah, how are you? Alhamdulillah, Alhamdulillah. Thank you very much. Please have a seat. Sheikh Rahim, mashallah, this house is beautiful. And the children, mashallah, the ugly. I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to give them to you and this service and this service. Sheikh Rahim, how many do you have, mashallah, from the children? I'm now 42 years old, mashallah. I'm married, I've been married for 18 years, 19 years nearly. I have five children, alhamdulillah. كان رحيم مغرما في الموسيقى حتى أنه لما انتهى من الدراسة عمل مباشرة في الموسيقى مع معارضة أهله. بدأ بمشروع صغير في الموسيقى حتى وصل واشتغل مع أشهر شركات الإنتاج العالمية. I went to work for one of the most famous record companies in the world, which was Motown Records. And at Motown Records, that was when I really started to mix with different people. So, if I was to think about some of the people that I met, some of the people that I worked with, I worked with Stevie Wonder, uh, and Stevie Wonder is one of the biggest recording artists in the world. I organized, well, I was on the team that organized Stevie Wonder's 40th birthday party and the launch of his Jungle Fever album. Um, and I worked on soundtracks to films. I worked on the soundtrack to Terminator 2. I worked on, uh, in fact, many, many of the singles that I worked on went diamond, platinum. They had all those discs. So we used to have, we used to get awarded all those discs. Tarabba Rahim, fi manzil ghayr muhtam biddin. فلما سألته عن ديانته قبل الإسلام قال We didn't have any pressure to follow a religion and my brothers and my sister and myself we all went away from Islam so by the time I was responsible for my own actions I, I wasn't following anything I wasn't Christian my mother was Christian I wasn't Christian and there was no Islam in my life but really my religion was more than anything else it was music this was my deen my deen was music وللأسف هذا حال كثير من الشباب المسلم الآن مفتونين في الغناء والطرب وهذا حال من يعبد هواه من دون الله سبحانه وتعالى يقول الله عز وجل أرأيت من اتخذ إلهه هواه والعياذ بالله When I look back now there were certain steps that brought me closer to Islam رحيم متى بدأ الإسلام ينبض في قلب رحيم؟ For me, it was because of the relationship I had with my closest cousin and my friend. And we lived like this, two brothers, all the way up until 18 years old. At 18 years old, every summer we used to go for holiday together. And this one summer we made plan for the holiday. And he phoned me and he said, I've got bad news, bad news. I said, what? He said, I can't come on holiday. I said, no, why not? He says, I have to go for Hajj. I said, oh my God. He said, I know, what am I going to do? I said, I'll phone your mother. So I phoned his mother. I said, auntie, please, please don't send him, don't send him. She said, no, he's going for Hajj. He's 18, he has to go for Hajj. I said, no, please, we booked on. She said, no, he's going. He said, I'm, what can I do? I'm sorry. So I went on holiday with my other friends. He went for Hajj. When he came back from Hajj, he was totally changed. Totally changed. Oh. He started to grow his beard. He stopped coming out with us. He wouldn't come anymore to the, you know, to the places where there was mixing and the place where there was music and all of this. He just started to practice his deen. But when I used to meet him, he was content. 
he was happy. بعكس ما كان يشعر به رحيم بالرغم من توفر المال الوفير عند رحيم ولكنه كان يعيش حياة صعبة وتعيسة وهكذا هي الحياة لم يجعلها الله سبحانه وتعالى طيبة فقط لأهل المال وإنما جعلها طيبة لمن يعمل صالحا Things started to change My career started to have some problems My relationships started to have some problems But my heart started to feel different when things started to go wrong in the music business and they didn't go wrong from a dunya point of view from a dunya point of view they were very good but inside my heart I was feeling more and more depressed more and more empty and it got to the stage one day when I really thought I was going crazy I was at my house I thought I was going mad and I remember thinking about God and making a deal and there were many, many sins in my life at that time. And I remember saying to God to say, if you help me in this situation that I'm in now, I will give up all my sins for three weeks. This was the deal I made with God. And on that day is when I said, and I will open the Quran and I will read it. And when I opened the Quran and I read it on that day, like a miracle, the verse I read in English, after every difficulty comes ease. And for me, it's like a, a miracle. You know? Because I was very desperate at that time. Uh, and I didn't know where to go. I didn't know where to turn. And I thought I was going crazy. And I, the last thing I wanted was a deen, was religion. I didn't want to be religious, I wanted the dunya. It was as if this verse was just written for me. No one else. That Allah, that I didn't even know Allah, God, whatever, but that this book somehow knew exactly what I needed at that point and at that time. So it was like a miracle. When I left the music business, I left at a time when people would have questioned why, because I'd been given a lot of success and I went through a difficult period for the first probably year that I was praying and that I was starting to fast and starting to read about Islam. It was a difficult time because I didn't know what I was going to do with my life. أكبر تحدي واجه رحيم هو رفض أمة لدخول الإسلام حيث أنها كانت تعتبر كل من يعتنق الديانات منافقا وخاصة المسلم. تخيلوا معي سبعة عشر عاما لم يستطع أن يقول لها كلمة واحدة عن الإسلام. Then when she found out she had cancer and it was a very bad cancer, only three weeks uh, she had to live. For the first time, for the first time, her heart softened towards Islam, just a little bit. But it was, wallahi, it was a miracle, because it was step by step by step. But the key thing, one of the key things was she called me one day when she was very close to dying. She called me and she said, look, I don't want to be buried. I want to be cremated. So I said to her, no problem. But I said, tell me this, if you're cremated, who's going to do it? She stopped, she said to me, well, what, what's the alternative? I said, I said, the alternative is if you die, then your sons. Your sons, me and your sons, we will carry you. No one else will see you. And we will take you to a place and your daughter and your daughter-in-laws, they will wash you and they will prepare you and they will wrap you in a simple white cloth. And no one will see you. And in one day, we will bury you in the ground with no coffin, with no fuss, very, very simple. She said to me, that's what I want. She said, that's what I want. But now I had a problem. She's not Muslim. So she phoned my brother and sister and she said, I want a Muslim burial. I would just try very slowly to give her small, small bits of da'wah. If there is a creator, do you think maybe he sent messengers? Do you think maybe he sent people as guides? And one day she said, yes, I believe that. So Sheikh, for me, I was happy. For me, I was happy. She believes in a creator, she believes in messengers. I thought, inshallah, I have an excuse. I can make dua for her. I can say to the Imam, inshallah, we bury her as Muslim. 
But my son, he was then 14 years old. He said, it's not enough. He said, it's not enough. He said, she has to say Shahada. So I was scared because I thought if he tries to make her say Shahada, then she will say, no, no, I don't want to say this. And then I have a problem. He said, don't worry, don't worry, Abba, don't worry. I will talk to her. So he went up to her bedroom. He said, and I was downstairs for like one hour. And I was walking around. Oh my God, what's happening? Did she say yes? Did she say no? And he came down. He said, easy. He said, no problem. I said, what? He said, she gave shahada. I said, properly in Arabic. He said, yes, Arabic fully, no problem. And maybe two, three days later, later she died. Oh. Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah. Subhanallah. I had no plans to go for Hajj that year because there were too many difficulties in the family after my mother died unexpectedly like that but then Islam Channel called me and actually their plan was not to take me they asked me to go and I said I can't go this year I've got too many difficulties with the family then at the last minute when there was only a few days to go before Hajj they approached me, they said, look, we've had some complications, we need you to come as a presenter this year. I said, I'm going to make Hajj for my mother. So within, within just uh, what three months of her dying, mashallah, I was able to go and I was able to make Hajj on, for my mother. And alhamdulillah, share that with millions of people around the world. And, and so many people, called because she died in Ramadan, she died in Ramadan, and I was doing TV work at that time. Allahu Akbar. People from around the world called and gave sadaqah in her name. Someone built a masjid in her name. So many orphans sponsored in her name. So Allah is Ar-Rahman. Allah is Ar-Rahman. Rahim. من حبه للقرآن يحرص يوميا على قراءة وسماع القرآن وله تدبر عجيب وتلاوته للقرآن رائع جدا سعد الغامدي الشيخ was the first one who I heard and I thought subhanallah this is so beautiful so I used to play last juz all the time all the time and his recitation of surah al-fajr is so beautiful so first of all, it became my favorite verse just by the sound of it. He used to say at the end of Surah Al-Fajr, Ya ayyatuhan nafsul mutma'inna irji'i ila rabbiki radiyatan mardiyatan fadkhuli fi ibadi wadkhuli jannati. And the way Sheikh Saad Al-Ghamidi recites this, it just is so beautiful. I didn't know what it meant, but it became my favorite verses just by the sound. Then when I began to read and understand what it meant, every time I think about these verses, I just think one thing, that maybe we will hear Allah say this. That Allah, Allah will allow some of us to hear these words, and we will hear these words. So this verse is very, it's very dear to my heart because this is my hope that we can hear this and that, and that my children and my parents will hear these verses. Inshallah. <laughs> 